We did this carefully that every urge we have, Allah has allowed a halal way to satisfy it. We're allowed to have the best food and the most delectable drinks and every type of sensual pleasure. We can do it in a halal way. But unfortunately, shaitan tempts us and he goes, oh, forget the cocktail juices, go to the haram stuff, okay? There's plenty of halal stuff if we wanted to. But shaitan makes the haram alluring. Just like in Jannah for our father Adam, what did he do? All of Jannah is open. Kula min harad and haythu shi'tuma. But just one tree was made haram. Our scholars say this is the reality of life. The default is everything is halal. But haram is a small bit. The default is everything is halal. So much halal out there. Haram is a small bit. But shaitan comes, seduces, talks, keeps on waswasa until finally we fall into that small amount of haram, thinking that that haram is more beneficial to us than all of the halal out there. But you know what, brothers and sisters, even in satisfying our halal desires, that is halal, that is good. But there comes a point in our lives and the life of every single human being that they understand that there's more to life than eating and drinking and sensual pleasures. And that's perhaps, Allahu A'lam, one of the reasons why we see so much depression and so much loneliness in the world around us right now. That people are given all types of pleasures at a young age. And at a very young age they discover, it's not good enough, I'm not happy. I have everything, but there's still an emptiness. Perhaps, wallahu a'lam, that this modern technology, with all of its you know, contrivances and all of this entertainment, it has expedited the discovery in the younger generation. And perhaps that's why, and Allah knows best, I'm just, you know, uh, uh, just saying a theory, perhaps that is one of the reasons why there is so much depression and emptiness and spiritual loneliness, because they discover maybe at 20 what perhaps most other human beings would discover after a lifetime of trying when they reach 50 or something. SubhanAllah brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter how old you are, even the teenagers in the audience, you know, you know, that satisfying your bodily desires, even in a halal manner, only takes you so far. A halal satisfaction is good, but then it goes away. You had a, the best meal that money could buy that's halal. Okay, how long are you going to enjoy the meal? Okay, and what's going to happen to the meal in 10 hours? Okay, good. Haram ones, they leave you with something in your heart, a, a, an unfilth, an uncleanliness. That is like a bitter pill that you have to, you just feel guilty about. So the bodily pleasures don't give us satisfaction in life. And that is because what really makes us human is not the physical flesh. Animals have physical flesh. What really makes us human is something that is divinely gifted to us. And that is the ruh. That is the soul. That is what is inside of us. And that's why our father Adam was created out of clay and the body lay there for ages and ages and ages. He didn't become human. When did he become human? When afakhna fihi, we blew into Adam our ruh. When Allah blew into Adam the ruh, the divine mystery that we'll never understand, that is what made Adam human. And that soul is what separates us from the animals. The animals have a different type of soul. Our soul is a divine gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah breathed it into Adam directly. This is Allah's blessing that he gave to Adam alayhi salam. That's what made Adam Adam. So what makes us human is what the soul is. Therefore, feeding the soul is what gives us that comfort in life. Not feeding the body. Feeding the body will give us animalistic pleasures. If they're halal, good. For a day or two, we'll be happy. If they're haram, well, we'll be happy for a day or two. And then we're going to be followed by guilt, by conscience, by our fitrah probing us. Why did you do that? What was the purpose? Either way, physical pleasures only last so long. We all know this. Spiritual pleasures on the other hand, feeding the soul, feeding the ruh, giving the ruh what it needs. That is what makes life not only worth living, but sustainable. We overcome the problems of life in a more optimistic manner. It gives us a sense of serenity, a sense of peace, a sense of comfort. We understand why we're here. The stronger our iman is in Allah, the more yaqeen we have, the more ikhlas, the more tawakkul. We believe in qadr. Therefore, any calamity, any musibah, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا Whatever happens, happens by the will of Allah. We believe in the Quran. 
every calamity that is given to us, we know that Allah Azza wa Jal has also revealed, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا We believe that for every calamity, multiple blessings and ease. Every trial, every pain, we firmly believe that Allah will reward us when we're patient. So even the pain becomes worth it. Not that we want it. We don't desire to be tested. But when we're tested, our iman brings a sense of comfort that if we didn't have iman, we would never have. And most importantly, most importantly, by feeding the ruh, by feeding the soul, we attain everlasting life in the next life. And of course, the soul is fed by where the origins of the soul are. Like the body is fed by where the origins of the body are. The body comes from this earth. The body comes from the soil. How do we feed the body? We go back to the soil. What does the soil give us? The water is stored over there. The plants, the fruits, the animals, they feed on the soil. Our physical body needs what is around us. The vegetation and the plants and the animals. So we feed the body via that. As for the soul, it comes from up there. It is what Allah gifted us. So when we want to feed the soul, we're not going to find the nutrients of the soul down here. The nutrients of the soul is in reconnecting it with its origin. And that is turning to Allah Azza wa Jal, reading the Quran, our sajdas, our dua, our dhikr. That is where the ultimate happiness lies. And Alhamdulillah, thumma Alhamdulillah, in the month of Ramadan, every one of us, we experience this reality. We understand it. We live it. Unfortunately, many of us when Ramadan finishes, we think the burden is back, is over. Let's go back to our lifestyles. As if we didn't benefit from the lessons of this month of Ramadan. Subhanallah, dear brothers and sisters. Wallahi, isn't it amazing that even once again, experience teaches us another fact of life, which is that generally speaking, and again, we all know this, especially those of you that are in your 20s, 30s or, or more than this. Generally speaking, with age, people become more religious. Isn't this the case, right? As people grow older, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, they become more and more religious, okay? This is something I myself went to college with groups of people back then when I was 20. I would have sworn by Allah they're never going to become religious. When I was a kid, I would have done that. Not that we should do that. And now subhanAllah, they are, you know, active in the masajid, doing this and that. This is the reality that generally speaking, people become religious as they become older in life. They face problems. They realize that life isn't worth living without that connection with Allah. Now we're very happy for all people who discover religion and become good Muslims. Even when they're 70, 80, Alhamdulillah, Al-Amalu Bil Khawatim. But guess what? When you discover religion when you're 70, 80, you can't possibly do the quantity of good deeds that you can do if you're religious your entire life. They're not the same. The one who chose religion at a young age, and I speak especially to the youth here, our Prophet Sallallahu gave you all an encouragement. One of the seven categories that will be blessed on the day of judgment is a young man or woman, shab, young, prime of, the, of your youth, teenager, early 20s, that's what a shab is. A young man or a young lady, they grew up in the worship of Allah, being a good, good Muslim, subhanAllah. So the one who chooses religiosity at a young age and then consistently maintains that, that cannot be compared even though we don't, you know, we're not discouraging becoming religious older, but you can't compare the one who for some reason some tragedy happened and they chose religion at an older age. We're happy for that person. But the point is we're given the opportunity now. And Allah Azza wa Jal told us this in the Quran. He said it to us when our father Adam came down to this earth. He told our father Adam two simple things. This is the rule that Allah gave to our father Adam. You and Iblis, both of you come down. Realize, O oh Adam, the two of you are going to be mortal enemies. That's rule number one. Iblis is your enemy. He's going to seduce you. He's going to tempt you. Like he tempted you in the garden, he will continue to tempt you on the garden of earth. What is rule number two? Whoever follows my guidance, this is the second rule, the main rule that we're told here. Whoever comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever follows the hidayah of Allah, فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَايَ That person shall neither go astray, nor shall he be in difficulty. Shaqawa means pain and suffering. 
Now, this doesn't mean that if you turn to Allah, you will not face pain in this world. It means you'll be able to cope with the pain. It means you'll have the mechanism to deal with the stress of this world. As for the one who turns away from my worship, Allah says, that person shall live a difficult life, a constrained life. Banka means your chest is constricted. Banka means it's just difficult. And then on the day of judgment, we'll resurrect him blind. In this world, he's going to live a difficult life. In this world, every issue that happens, every calamity, every musibah is going to make life so difficult for him. And again, this is what Allah says in so many verses. Allah tells us that whoever does good deeds and believes in Allah Azza wa Jal, فَلَا نُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا We're going to grant this person a beautiful and sweet life. حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا is promised to the one who believes in Allah and does good.